My current pastor set up a scenario to make a point about his impending retirement as senior pastor. I'm assuming by his story, some members weren't pleased with this change. He began by pointing out various areas of the sanctuary where he knew faithful members always sat and said, if you came into church one day and found someone sitting in your seat, would you say, great, there's someone sitting in my seat, I have a member. Or would you say, great, there's someone sitting in my seat, <laughs> now I'll have to move. Routines. Routines that keep us stuck are the simplest and hardest to change. They run deep and have big consequences sometimes. And for that, I ask, do routines help or hinder our lives? Humans are creatures of habit. Let's face it, nature likes routines. The sun rises and sets every day. Spring is followed by summer, fall, and winter. Just as it takes us 20 years to develop our adult personalities, we're also developing behaviors and habits that stay with us for a lifetime. But unfortunately, some of those habits and behaviors are not always helpful or healthy for us and may cause difficulties in our lives and our relationship with others. Changing a routine is not something that can happen overnight. If something took 20 plus years to learn, it's going to take an equally significant amount of time to unlearn or change those habits and routines. It just seems harder because it's a process. Not something that you can wake up overnight and say, hey, I'm going to do everything completely different today. <laughs> Unless you're Arnie, because he's just that adventurous guy for the rest of us. It takes a minute. You may ask, do our routines harder to change the older we become? Yes and no. The fact is most people get set in their ways because those ways are familiar to them. To ask someone or expect them to change the familiar or the unfamiliar is scary. The people don't like to do it. Most humans avoid fear in fearful situations. And therefore, we don't like change. Or we don't do well when confronted with change in our lives. Groundhog Day was a 1993 film about a weatherman who routinely reported on the annual Groundhog Day festivities in his town. In the fourth year, he made no effort to hide his frustration on covering this story. Awakening the following day, he realizes that it's Groundhog Day again. Now, at first, he uses this to his advantage. But then, he discovers that he is doomed to spend the rest of eternity seeing the same people in the same place do the same thing every day. Amos Bronson Alcott, a motivational speaker, said, the more routine, the less life. So what are three ways that we, can, we find ourselves getting stuck? Number one, time. When we get stuck in the past, you'll hear people that say, I've always done it this way. To get those kind of excuses. Lack of vision can nurture our being stuck in the past. But on the other hand, you have entrepreneurs who have little to no attachment to the past and can have impulsive action towards new beginnings. Personally, I try to do routines because they somewhat help keep me organized and focused on long and short-term goals. Without it, things seem to get misplaced or undone. But I also inherited my father's entrepreneurial drive that allows me to set forth on new business adventures without being stifled by the past or fear of the unknown. When I was a little girl, my father was a ball player, a professional ball player in the ABA. I remember all his all-star conference shoes in his closet and all the uniforms and taking him to the airport. That was a constant thing in our life to, to play a game. 
And this was, I'm pretty sure my father thought it was going to be his way of life. And eventually he was going to move up to the NBA. But with the demise of the ABA and not getting promoted, he returned to being a teacher. Now he could have been settled with this and, and said, this is, this is where my life is going, this is the path, and I'm com the path that I'm on, and I'm comfortable with that. But he decided, no, I'm going to do something totally different, something that I have never done before. I'm going to start my business in landscaping. From the reaction of my mother, this was a big shock. But he made it work because he wasn't afraid. It's, are you progressing with time or is time <coughs> progressing without you? Number three, small chunk. You ever met people who can't see the big picture? And when they can't see the big picture, they obsess about the little details. And it's hard to get them to see a broader view. It's challenging to teach them how to Learn not to sweat the small things in life. I think we've all encountered folks like that. Are you seeing the big picture in your life? And number three, last but not least, fear. Fear constrains performance in any setting. When you let fear influence your life and how you do your job, it affects the bottom line. My oldest sister, I remember she got a job working at the phone company. And when she approached her five year mark of being there, she said, oh, I'm gonna do this for a few more years and then I'm out of here. And then she approached her 10 year mark. She says, I'm gonna do this just, just for a few more years. I gotta pay this bill, this bill, and then I'm out. I'm gonna do what I finally want to do. And when her 20 year mark came, she says, wow, I can't believe I've been here 20 years. But at this point, she has been given a choice of whether to stay or not because the division has closed down, and they're, they're letting go everyone. <laughs> now she has to make the, a decision. Is she going to let fear dictate what she's going to do and find another job that keeps her comfortable and keeps her set in her routines? Or she's going to go a new route, a new direction, try something that she's always been wanting to do for 20 years? Of course, I encouraged her to do the latter and told her that if I didn't believe you, could, that you couldn't act, I wouldn't tell you to be in this business because it is a hard business to get in. Since then, a year ago, she has been acting every day, getting paychecks, have been in two movies since, and has a lucrative career finally doing what she wants to do. Are you letting fear saying farewell to your hopes and dreams? Now, realistically, people cannot change without some sort of time and effort. We're too stuck in our ways, we're comfortable with it, and that's what we know. But you also have to remember, routine is a monster that absorbs life. So do something enjoyable, do something that fascinates you. It could be something simple as adding orange juice to your diet every morning because you want to get health conscious and you want to add more vitamin C. Or committing to go for a walk three times a week. As simple as that may sound, that is hard to do on a busy schedule. Or trying a functionary role in Toastmasters you don't like. Like that time machine. <laughs> that has given me trouble since I've been here. But I do it because I learned from it. The key to changing a routine is not switching out the old ones for new ones, but trying something new every day, adding on an addition to your life each and every day. Whenever I send an email, at the end it says, have a productive day. To me that says, were you present in life? Did you give an encouraging word to someone? Did you scratch out what you finally wanted to do on your to-do list? Were you productive? Henry Van Dyke said, an American writer, said to let habit and routine dictate the pattern of living, the soul will not emerge. I encourage you to keep those habits and routines that keep you grounded in who you are, but to also explore the what ifs in life, because those are the questions that are going to take you to another level. Mr. Mm -hmm.